Well, world, it is Wednesday, June 8th, 2022. And looking out the window at Defiance, it's a beautiful sunny day. Blue skies, cool weather, 55 degrees when I went running this morning. And I think it's going to be a, a gorgeous day today. <clears throat> but longer term, I think we're looking at some very hot temperatures next week. So enjoy this day. The devotion for today is entitled Mary Said by Quinn Caldwell. And Quinn bases the devotion upon a couple of words taken out of Luke chapter 1, verses 34 and 38. And I encourage you to read those full verses. But for the devotion, Quinn used the two words, Mary said. And Quinn writes, These are two of the most important words in Scripture. The angel of the Lord comes to Mary to announce what God is proposing for her body, for her fertility, for her life. It's a big moment, and through the years, many have recorded what they thought was most important about it. The angle of Mary's gaze, the position of her hands, the drape of her clothes, the lily she's holding for some reason. Not Luke. Luke thinks what's important to record is what she had to say. Mary said, How can this be? Give me the information I need to make a reproductive choice. Mary said, Let it be with me according to your word. I give you my consent. That Luke takes the time to report what Mary said means this. Part of the gospel, part of the good news of Jesus Christ, is that God takes the time to listen when women speak about their bodies. God, full of knowledge, thinks the questions and thoughts of young girls that young, <clears throat> excuse me, thinks the thought the questions and thoughts young girls have about their reproductive health are worth paying attention to. God, full of power, will not move without the consent of the moved upon. If you're a person who looks to Mary as a model of motherhood, then you best be sure you're also a person who looks to the way God treated her, both when she was a mother and, just as importantly, when she wasn't. If you're a person who's trying to build a nation that God would approve of, then you best be sure you pay attention to what Luke and God did when Mary spoke. And Quinn's prayer. For all the ways you listen, for all the bodies you protect, for all the consent you wait for, for all the autonomy you respect, thank you. Amen. I think this is an important devotion for us today in this time and, and place. Um, and it made me think that, you know, I personally, <clears throat> I don't like the idea of abortion, but I fully support a woman's choice. But even more than I um, dislike the thought of abortion, I really dislike the fact that we have created a world in which women believe it is their only choice, their real choice. Because to choose to keep a child has so many different ramifications, um, especially for a woman who is not married. Um, there are societal impacts, uh, mental, emotional, physical impacts, financial impacts that we as a society are not willing to support. So it ends up being a situation in which a woman doesn't really have a choice if she is not prepared mentally, physically, emotionally, financially to support a child or even, I mean physically even, um, with perhaps issues with other health concerns. So if we really want women to make real choices, we have to, have to we must offer real um opportunities for um, making whatever choice they make. And I, statistically, I think the rates of abortion have always gone down when there have been supports for um, women should they choose to keep a child. That's what really reduces the, the rate of abortion. So if that's really your interest, look for the support that um, women really meet, need to make the choice that you think that they should make. But it still needs to be their choice. And I think God would support that. That's what the divorce says to me. Hope you have a good day. And I hope to talk to you again tomorrow.